Whoa, we are off. 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, whoa! The Arima Monica LD for BeamNG. This is a brand new mod, which brings a whole new brand and a stylish 90s Japanese sedan to the game. Look at this thing, it looks quite nice. In real life, this is based on something called the Toyota Carina ED. And this car was popular with young people. This is meant to be a compact sedan, but it actually looks pretty big. Now the doors do open, we've got a big trunk in here, looks pretty good, you have to kind of load things from the top, which is kind of interesting. And yeah, I like the style of this thing. So, Arima is a totally new brand. This mod is by a guy called Can Can, it's a law, friendly vehicle available for free on the repo. Okay, I've popped the hood, let's have a look underneath. We've got a 1.8 litre engine, straight for 16 valve in this base business model. Now the interior isn't super high quality, it looks okay, the textures are really nice, but the like it's quite low poly, but it does capture that 90s vibe, you know, the weird kind of weird patterns on the seats and then the plastic trim. Okay, let's go and I'm very surprised how powerful this engine is for a base model. It's pretty surprising. So we're driving around West Coast USA with my Logitech G27 steering wheel and Truck IR, which is the system I use to look around. And here we go, we've got a nice straight bit. Now look at this power, ready? Second gear, up to 7,000. And look, we are off, 75. This is a base model, remember? It's not like fast, but for a base model, whoa! It's got some good power. Right, let's do a crash test into this pole here. Here we go. Oh, oh, I'm liking the crash model. All the uh, little hubcaps fell off, which is great. And yeah, that would not be a survivable crash. Look at where the steering wheel is, right in our chest. So yeah, a nice J-beam right there. And uh, see that the dials light up. Yeah, they're really crisp and clear dials. I always love it. And we have that one. has got a clock that works down there. That's my real world time. And you know what? She handles pretty well. This one is front wheel drive, but there are some sporty all wheel drive variants. I believe the four wheel drive variant on the real life Toyota was derived from that Corolla ST, I think with the four wheel drive system, which is awesome. Okay, she is lacking a bit of torque. I think it, you know, it revs quite freely and it has quite a bit of power for a 1.8 litre, but not much torque. And it's naturally aspirated as well, which is surprising for how powerful it is. So here are the configs, 21 in total. We've got a police car down here, some drift and race variants. But let's move on to the lounge, the middle trim. Oh, I'm liking it. Tan interior, uh, fabric seats again, but very, very nice. We've even got a tan steering wheel. So this has a V6 engine, let's floor it. Automatic gearbox is really slow to change, which is realistic, but listen to that. Sounds pretty nice. Nice exhaust note on this thing. And I'm loving the way the rear lights wrap all the way around. Look, we've got the reverse lights there, the brake lights there, the indicators. Yeah, they look nice as well. Okay, we are off. This has a better turn of speed. Uh, the interior is actually a little bit overbearing. I usually like tan interiors, but this is like, whoa, really in your face. I guess it was quite 90s, what are you doing? Right, the AI seemed to just be targeting me recently. I did a stream the other day and they were like crashing into me for no reason. Oh my goodness, I just have the worst luck. But yeah, very comfortable ride. The high speed stability is pretty good. Again, it's front wheel drive. There's no ESC, but doesn't feel like it's gonna spin out. Whoa, oh dear, oh dear. Wow, look at this crash right here. It's completely deformed the roof line. Oh dear, and the ETK hasn't, oh no, the ETK is actually barely damaged. I mean, it would be a write-off because of that wheel, but still. I do like the interior design though, and I like this mirror in here. Like it kind of dangles down on one little bit of plastic. That's really interesting, quite a unique design. Do these lights work? Ah, oh, they don't, but that's cool. Right, let's do a crash test. Here we go, slow motion. And here we go, into here. That's about 60 miles per hour. The wheels come off. You know what, it's really not that bad. It's a pretty good crash model on this thing. Yeah, one of the wheels has come off and I don't know where it went. It probably ended up in the passenger cabin somewhere. Oh no, there it is, there it is. These are the Tauras. These are the sporty models and we've got three different variants of the Tora here. We've got the front wheel drive, the all wheel steering and the all wheel drive. We'll check them out in order. So the front wheel drive is pretty cool, but first, I've seen these kind of yellow lights here. Alt and N to do the fog lights. Look, they're the fog lights. They're integrated into the main beam segment. That's, I've never seen that before. So it's a sporty model with a red interior and pink seats. What, why has it got pink seats? Anyway, let's go. This is front wheel drive, despite having a powerful V6 engine and it really does wheel spin quite a lot. Whoa, and she, well, it's a little better than the other one. We nearly hit someone there, but uh, the steering is good. It's just the oh, suspension is maybe a little bit too soft. I don't know. Oh, not much torque steer though. I think it's just revving and like spinning the wheels so much. You're not going to get much torque steer because you've got no grip at all. Oh, the gearbox is really weird. It just changes 
so strangely, that kind of 90s slush box. I've talked about this before. I'm not a fan of automatics, especially from this era, but whoa, oh my goodness. My foot's been to the floor for like five seconds and nothing happened. Okay, here we go. Look out, another Pessima. Whoa, oh, sorry, engine damaged. Oh dear, what's the damage? Yeah, not good. Okay, next up, the four-wheel steer. Now, four-wheel steering was very, very popular in the 90s. A lot of Japanese manufacturers made them. You can see it's, it turns quite a bit and it really does improve the turning circle. Look at that, we can turn pretty much in our own length. That's cool. The beige interior is back. There's not much else to say about this thing. I believe it just has the front-wheel drive system. Here we go. Yes, it does, which is weird. I don't think you can get a combined um, four-wheel drive and all-wheel steer, which makes sense to me. Like, why wouldn't you have that? I mean, four-wheel steering is back today, and I'm guessing the reason they didn't have it on an internal combustion engine car is that, like, getting the uh, power to be delivered to a steering wheel at the back is very difficult, unless you can do it with an electric motor, which is far less complicated. So that's why modern cars like Lexuses, I think, and Porsches have four-wheel steering on their electric ones. What is he doing? And moving right along to the all-wheel drive. The styling on the Tourer is pretty nice. I like the front grille and I like this little, well, it's quite a stylish, discreet wing at the back there. That's really nice. I think this mod has a custom startup noise as well. Listen to this. Oh yeah, if I, let's have a look at the engine. Let's have a look at this beautiful, I think it's a two litre V6 maybe? I'm not sure, V6 four cam, yeah, it's still pretty cool. Right, we've got our manual back, and is it any grippier? Here we go, second gear and floor it. Oh yes, whoa, wheel spinning still a bit, but definitely feels a lot more secure on the road. Oh yeah, I'm loving it. In fact, let's go down here, whoa. The handling's okay, I mean, it's not, whoa, a sports car. But this car was apparently popular with young people, and to me it looks more kind of like a Lexus, like an older person's car. But um, I'm guessing they're basing this on that real-life Toyota, and I'm guessing that was popular with young people. I mean, let me know what you think, but this to me seems like more of an old man's car. But maybe tastes are just different in Japan for cars. Let's do a handbrake turn, see if we can get this thing to drift. Here we go. Whoa! Oh, not great. But that was pretty much my fault and this car is now wrecked. Look at that wheel. We're here at this mini racetrack at this car park to see the Roy's Racing version. This is a tuned um, version of the Tora, which is gonna be cool. It's got Roy's decals on the side. I don't know what Roy's really is or who it's based on, but pretty nice. We've got a custom steering wheel here. The seats are the same, but it is more powerful and I believe it's all-wheel drive and it revs up to just over 7,000. Here we go. No, it's not all-wheel drive, it's front-wheel drive. But we've got a turbo, so how does she handle? Whoa. Oh, is it all-wheel steer? It might be all-wheel steer. Mm, uh, uh, no. What? What is this thing then? It's just got a turbo? I don't know, it's pretty cool. Uh, how does she handle? Whoa. Uh, mm, it's not the most understeery thing in the world. Oh, actually, it puts its power down pretty well, even when you're turning. I think the turbo does help torque steer. Yes. That feels pretty nice, actually. I like it. And onto the real racetrack now. Let's put our foot down. Oh, yeah. Turbo really helps this thing. Even though it's not a, like a massive turbo, really feels a bit more punchy. Gives a bit more power. And, yeah, brilliant. Then we've got the Tora Wonderland. This is a cool variant because it's the highest spec you could get from the factory. It's basically an even more tuned version of the Tora. And we've got a pink interior again. Uh, who would have this? I've got no idea, but let's see how powerful it is. We've got the manual and we've got what sounds like a turbo or is it a supercharger? I'm not sure. Here we go. Whoa, we are off. Yes, that is powerful. Not 60, probably in about five seconds, five or six seconds. Higher up, the acceleration isn't amazing. I think this engine can do with a bit more grunt, but it's not bad. Oh, she looks good on the move. Not sure about the color though, but the wheels look nice. They look really nice. Okay, braking performance. It's pretty good, yeah, pretty good. Power down, come on. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a turbo, I can hear the wastegate. Uh, whoa, oh yeah, bit better grunt. Revs up to about 7,800, 7,700. 7, That's pretty revvy for a V6. Now a test of any Beam NG car is how it handles the Laguna Seca style corner. And here we go, we can drift around it, yes, four wheel drifting. Oh, I should have kept the power on. Let's have another go at that. So it seemed to handle it quite well, here we go. Whoa, yes, power, 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 go, 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 off here. Slightly cut it, but yeah, feels good. The suspension is much better sorted on this one. And that turbo really does help. I mean, it's not a big turbo, but it really is helping it get through the gears faster. It makes it feel a bit more like a sports car. There's even a Japanese patrol car in this pack, and I love the way it looks. Very, very realistic to a 90s Japanese police car. The sirens and the lights all work. 
Uh, Japanese police sirens kind of sound like traditional American sirens, like from the 1940s and 50s. Um, I don't know why that is. I guess maybe because of Occupy Japan and America imported their sirens. I don't know. Very old fashioned, but they do work and they're quite nice. And you really get a good feeling of being a Japanese police officer. Here we go. Whoa. Put to the floor. Automatic gearbox would definitely let you down though. Oh, come on, change up. Oh, why does it do that? Ah, oh, I just don't know why anyone would put up with these gearboxes. It doesn't even have a sport mode or anything. Let's crash it. Here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, dear. That is a big... Cr wow, look at that. The bumper's being ripped off. We can see the metalwork underneath. Oh, look at the front end. Oh, dear. So this is the track day variant. We've got some cool customizations on this thing. We've got these little bits of tape over the front headlights to stop them, I guess, smashing into a million pieces. We've got an anime up there. Uh, 21 is our number. What does that say? I don't want to pronounce that. Uh, TM works. Yeah, it looks pretty nice, actually. Whoa, the anime is like right in my face. But anyway, uh, we've got, oh, a sequential. No, it's not. It is a manual, but it looks like a sequential. We've got a special steering wheel. We've got a roll cage. Okay, let's try this thing. Oh, that's, whoa, a lot of wheel spin. I think it's front wheel drive. Oh yeah, very grippy. Whoa, very grippy. So direct. Has it got all wheel steering? Or is that just me? Let's see. No, I don't think it does. That's amazing for not having all-wheel steering. And we've got a big turbo up to 19 PSI. That is a whopper of a turbo right there. Whoa, okay. But how easy is it to handle around the corners? Not bad. Oh, we can get it to sort of oversteer a bit. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, here we go. There's fifth. We're doing 110. Whoa, look at this thing go. Oh my goodness. It hasn't got a massive top speed, which is, you know, that's okay for a track day. More of a corners car, I guess. Here we go. Oh, the roll cage. Well, the roll cage definitely helped. Look at the lack of deformation compared to the front there. But the, again, the steering wheel right in our belly. Oh dear. We've got more anime variants, the Neo Universe and the Holo Itasha. Um, I don't know anything about these. I'm guessing they're anime shows or something, but they look quite nice. I think they've got slightly different styling and very different wheels on this thing. I believe they're the same apart from the wheels. Ooh, ooh, oh my goodness, that is hard to handle. Now, is it four wheel drive? Ooh, I think it is. What's that on the back? What does it say? Max Coffee. I want one of those on my car. I want Max Coffee on my car. Yeah, I think you struggle to drift this thing because it has got quite a lot of grip. Oh, whoa, yeah, it just, Okay, that is crazy. Here we go. Here is the drifting variant. Looks pretty cool. It's called, I think, the Groove or Garage Nuts. Wow. Looks pretty good, though. Can we open the trunk? Oh, we can. Whoa, look at that wing. Okay, it's pink. Do quite like it. Let's try and drift it. So third person. Here we go. Around a car park because I want to make it difficult for myself. Oh, just about handled that, but not really in the right gear. Look at the uh, slightly off-center, off-placed uh, number plate there. I like that. Cool detail. Right, whoa, whoa. Oh, like it a lot. Very easy to drift. Oh, we hit the curb. Oh, <laughs> wow. This car actually makes me able to drift. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, I'm loving this. This is amazing. Wow. Yeah, you should definitely check this out. Whoa, if you struggle to drift, try this little variant out because it will make you a god at drifting. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of power. Whoa, can I handle it, can I handle it? Reverse, reverse, reverse. Yes, we managed to capture it somehow. Okay, here we go, J turn, whoa, yay, whoa. Just too much power. Oh, wrecked it right at the end and the intercool is broken. Oh dear. So here we are, the final and most extreme variant, the Midnight Racing Club. This goes about 300 kilometers per hour. We're gonna try and hit that speed before the end of the video. It's got a twin turbo, that V6 engine, and I love the paintwork on this thing. It looks really, really nice. Interior, pretty similar to the other racing variants. We've got red seats, does look quite nice. Okay, here we go. Let's go over the bridge first and see what speed we can get up to on here. So here we go. Whoa, whoa, we are off. 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, whoa! Watch out, oh my, how did I miss that? Right, here we go. There's 140, 150, I, what's that in kilometers? Uh, right, so we need to get to pretty much the bottom of the, oh, of the, oh, speedometer to get to 300. Building up the speed out of this tunnel. Here we go, and floor it. Second, third. Oh yes, there's 7,000, change up. What does it go to? 9,000 RPM, that's crazy. Right, there's 150 miles per hour, we need to be in this view. 
That is fast. Right, we need to slow down a bit because this is dangerous. Here we go, fourth. This corner here is pretty dangerous. Oh, this isn't the perfect bit to get the top speed, is it? Okay, let's use this bit of the map coming out of the tunnel on this long expressway. Here we go, a dodge to traffic and off we go. So that's 200 kph, 220, 240. Whoa, my goodness, that's 260, I think. Oh, 7,000, we can rev right up to nine, so we're gonna keep going. 280 and six gear. That, we haven't got six gears. Okay, fine. Five gears. 300 kph coming up. 200 miles per hour. Whoa. Let's do a big crash test to finish this off. Here we go. Slow motion. Whoa. Pessima. That's almost like ironic, isn't it? We're based on the Pessima. Oh dear. Well, surprisingly, this car didn't catch fire. We're going together. Let's go together. Oh, we got ripped apart. So sad so sad but you know what we'd probably be okay at least alive thanks to this roll cage look at the deformation on the roll cage that is crazy but there you go the arima monica ld a weird name but a truly sweet mod it's available for free on the beam and g repo i'll leave a link to it in the description now if you'd like to see another video on a luxury stylish car then why not watch one on screen right now it's about the genesis g90 mod for beam ng something a bit different a brand we don't see very often in this game Thank you so much for watching, that's all from me and I'll see you soon for some more Simulator Adventures.